Now in the back end of Linux, is it closer to, or the back end of Mac, is it closer to Unix at this point than um, it is? Yeah, so... Yeah. Ooh. It's first operating system that had the map, the, the ding. You want to talk about your new prize on the audio here while uh, while we watch? Well, so again, it's the the Quadra eighty four AV, which is the the Quadra series had some nine hundreds and some seven hundreds. This ended up as eight forty, which is newer than the nine hundred series. Numbering's hard, apparently. That's mm -hmm. kind of the whole thing with it. Um, it's got a 44 megahertz processor. Uh, this particular one has a whopping 32 megabytes of RAM, <laughs> which is more than it needs to to upgrade to 8.1, which is the highest uh, version of Mac OS that's still supported the Motorola chips, which is what this one has. Right. Um, in order to go on the internet, you must be minimally running 8. Mm -hmm. It was a, a thing back in the day, um, but in order to run it, I need to get a CD because Mac OS 8.1 was, and I'm sure this is going to be so much space to you, 230 megabytes. Yeah, that's pretty... There is an option to put them on floppies <laughs> if you have so many floppies. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. That transition from floppy to CD, I, they were saying like you could get like a version of Windows on like 80 floppies or something like that? Or? Yeah, so 95, I think, was the last one that you could retail go and get it on floppies. Um, 98, I think, had some, but most people at that point were on CD. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> now... Here's some neat features this does not do. <coughs> oh. Ignore that. I did have to shut it down incorrectly because of an, uh, a floppy disk issue. Uh -huh. The reason it has you... Oh. So let's talk about the weird Y2K, shall we? This PC, technically Y2K compliant. Go ahead. Click on that. 1956, huh? So, <laughs> whoever programmed Mac 7.5 did, in fact, make sure it was Y2K compliant. This particular version of Mac does recognize the year 2000. However, the year 2020 reverts 1956. Interesting. It's like... It, it, up to 2019, it's fine. As soon as you set it to 2020, it flips back to 1959. Interesting. It seems like it's one of those, surely this person will fix it or upgrade their machine before the year 2020, so we only have to do the bare minimum from Y2K compliance. Um, yeah, so we got that. That's the hard drive info. Now, if you go... There is a button to show the Mac info itself, which I believe is under the Apple icon. About this Macintosh. Very top. Yeah. So it originally shipped with 7.5.3. <coughs> Interesting. Um, you got stuff in the. Yeah, somebody put some things in the hard drive that can't be deleted, so I've just kind of left them there. Uh, go ahead and open up the hard drive icon over there. This will be super exciting. Oh, it is a, a ball mouse, by the way. Okay. It's super fun. Here's one of the issues I have with old Mac. Open up the games, shall you? Okay, great. Uh, can you align these icons to your grid for me? <laughs> Well, I know the Windows way to do it, but... Nope. Oh, 
Yeah, I remember there was... A Go to special at the top and clean up window. <laughs> it just kind of moves them into the wig grid. There's no way to sort folders. Yeah. This, that wasn't a feature included yet. <laughs> Uh, so, if you go into the Apple menu really quick, there's another <laughs> neat feature. Uh, open up Word. Is that Win Perfect? Nope. <coughs> Office? Yep. Because I knew Microsoft was a software company long before they were an operating system company. No, so at this point, Windows 3.11 had come out. Um, here's the interesting thing that I read about this. So first off, the copyright is 95 on this. This version of Microsoft Word came out well into the Windows 95 lifespan. Mm -hmm. Here's why this is fun. Microsoft had a deal set up with Apple. Um, so right around when Mac 8 was coming out, uh, Internet Explorer was a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So... Microsoft had an agreement with Apple that they would continue to produce um, versions of Microsoft Office for Mac if they made the default uh, browser Internet Explorer. So Internet Explorer 4 and 5 came out for Mac. Then a very famous uh, Microsoft yeah, versus I Netscape uh, thing happened and Safari was born out of the, whoops, gotta distance herself from Microsoft again. <laughs> Guess our deal's all void now. I noticed it automatically capitalizes the I. Well, that's Microsoft Office. That was a thing that... Um, Even back then? Yep. There's a lot of features that were always in Office. Uh, the other... Yeah, so like in the bottom, the, the column count and stuff, like you would see in regular Microsoft Office on Windows, is still in there, which is really neat. The keyboard is okay. It's not amazing, but it's fine. The The model that shipped with the Quadra 700s had the weird hook-shaped enter key, which I've never quite been a, fun, a fan of. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the ABD keyboard have to get for the Mac, um, mostly because, and one of the other assurances that had, is the... Mac key on this is required to eject floppy disks. You have to hit Mac button and E to make floppy disks come out of your machine. Super fun. Um, yeah, so this has PowerPoint, Word, and Excel, which was super fun. Um, yeah. So, uh, other features of 7 that haven't come out, or that were eventually uh, dropped. Um, 7.6 was the first version of Mac that lets you put a picture as the background. <laughs> um, the whole uh, Mac key click to simulate right <coughs> clicking, also a 7.6 feature. Yeah, why doesn't Max have? I why how did I guess they went with the single button as part of that it just works mantra. No, so it just works was later on. So, um, the it just works mantra came out when the IMAX, the like the television all in one things came out. It's That's a, when that became their slogan. I noticed Windows can overlap other Windows. Yep. Um, what about multitasking? Can it run two things at the same time? Not well. Um, so you might be noticing a very uh, prominent feature of later versions of Mac. Mm -hmm. There's no bar at the bottom for things to nest into. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't come out to late. So there's a lot of things that it doesn't quite have that people are used to. Um, oh, right, I set it to full colors. Like, here's the thing, it runs games pretty decently, games that came out on it. Um, 
I have to get a, a CD going so that I can um, do Hot Dog Heart on it per request of someone. Have, have you played this one? No. Yeah, it's not quite a demo now, is it? Yeah. Okay, so close on to this. I'm going to show you another neat little thing that it does. Um, so hit the, the apple in the upper left. Close. If yeah, remember, you have to hold it. Yeah. I didn't actually know that. My husband had to tell me, because I never used an old Mac. <laughs> I just assumed when you clicked window or menus, they would stay open. I haven't and used... And close is on the left, not on the right. I think I used a Mac like this in high school, at, Ith at uh, Ithaca High School, in like, two, in like 1997 or something like that. Probably. Yeah, so hit the Apple icon, and then go down to Control Panel. This actually does have the Control Panels. Plural, by the way. Control Panels. Ooh. So, a lot of features you'll see on here are for the original monitor, mm -hmm. which I do have access to, but I'm not going to because it weighs 60 pounds. <laughs> and that's not even a joke. It's disgustingly heavy. So, the original monitor could be controlled by the operating system. So, brightness, colors, um, it had built-in speakers mm -hmm. so that the sound also could be controlled. Um, it had a very interest. So, there was a special plug in the back of the monitor that then would go to several parts of the back of this machine. And, of course, this one has the power pass-through. I'm not sure if you showed that earlier. But yeah. I'll get in the pictures. Um, yeah. <coughs> so this does support a modem, and I have a couple of them, just not with me. Um, there's a DIN port on the back mm -hmm. that you plug a dongle in, because, again, Mac has always been about their fucking dongles. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, so there's a, a dongle that plugs into the back that plugs into um, <coughs> a dual phone jack. The problem is you have to put a dummy into one of the phone's jacks if you're only planning on running just the phone. Because um, you would normally put a phone in the other so that you could, you know, not type your whole phone system. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing. Uh, so there's also a button for power book display. Um, this could connect to power books, is my understanding. Uh, the colors for monitor coloring. ODBC setup, really? Yeah. All, even all the way back then? Yep. Still a thing in Windows. Yep. It even looks kind of like how it does in Windows. Yeah, so here's the thing. Uh, this old version of Mac does support Apple Talk. Interesting. So you can... Uh, so if you upgrade it to 8.1 with the, the newer version of Apple Talk, you can actually hook it up to a modern MacBook and transfer files back and forth. Hmm. I don't have one of those, but if I did, it'd be neat. Um, yeah. So you can scroll down. There's more buttons. Um... It does have QuickTime. This was upgraded to have QuickTime. So you can choose which hard drive to start up with. Uh, that's what the startup disk is. Um, virtual memory. Uh, it did support. It's not turned on. In fact, they recommend not turning it on unless you uh, don't have enough memory uh, for the operating system. RAM disk? Yep. Cool. Uh, not great, but is available. Mm. So yeah, you can see more power book options on the bottom, screen options. Um, there's no video panels installed. Um, so the video panel is an expansion port. Right. So that you can have an extra monitor. Despite this having three <coughs> ways to connect <coughs> monitors to it, you can only have one at a time. Interesting. Yeah, so the screen option is for the, the fancy monitor. Insertion blanking menu. Yep. If I was going to show this to an 18-year-old, 
then uh, they would have no idea what's going on. Yeah, token ring. You gotta love me some token ring. Yeah, so originally... Collision avoidance, collision avoidance. <laughs> yep. Getting a packet. It's like a particle accelerator for packets. Yep. So this supports that. So are you gonna... You have to... Okay, so you're going... You're not, so, the goal is to... Once my CD caddies come in, and I can finally use the CD drive... Because right now it needs caddies because it doesn't have a tray. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to burn uh, Mac 8.1 onto a disc. Slap this bad boy with 8.1. At that point it will accept modern internet protocols. <laughs> and I, it should also come with Internet Explorer 5, which is super exciting. And I will attempt to internet on this Mac. Um, there's also a couple of other things that upgrading to 8.1 uh, allows. You minimally need eight megabyte or 20 megabytes of RAM mm -hmm. in order to use the internet, from what I've read. So we're good. We've got 12 more than we. <laughs> um, yeah. Quick time. That's it. It's not super fancy. Um, I've tried to launch QuickTime, and there seems to be an issue with it. Um, right. Stickies, it does support uh, virtual <laughs> sticky notes, which is very exciting. Where is the QuickTime launcher? Uh, so it would be audio. Uh, da, 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 agenda, Clarks, keep going down. This mouse doesn't work well on this keyboard. Or on this. It, that mouse doesn't work well. <laughs> but it has to be an ADB mouse. This doesn't support a USB. Yeah, so Apple CD audio player does not work. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, like I said, this was used. Oh. Whoa. That around. Oh no! Now you have to reorganize the buttons. Oh, I wanted to see Excel though, because early. Yep, that's in there. Early Excel. Uh, now is this closer? To, is the back end of? You might have to remember that's a different version of Excel that didn't come with the version of Word, which was six. Right. Now, in the back end of Linux, is it closer to, or the back end of Mac, is it closer to Unix at this point than um, it is? Yeah, so, I'm, I just read, I just watched a thing about that. Um, this 7.5 is all Unix based. Um, there was an older version of Mac where you put in a disk once you open oh, open up <coughs> Apple's operating system to turn it into Apple plus Linux. Right. Or, sorry, Apple plus Unix. But at this point, it's all Unix-based. Okay. Um, it is based off of the Berkeley Unix, which we now call BSD, and BSD has turned into FreeBSD and Slack, which still exist. Cool. Can you In fact, there's a version of Slackware that looks exactly like uh, the version of Unix that came out on the PCs that Steve Jobs made shortly after he left Apple, which also introduced uh, the world's first world browser. Uh, so at this point in Mac's history, Steve Jobs is not at Apple. Yeah, so the version, if you save these files and put them onto a floppy, you will be able to open them in Office 365. Nice. So it still has full compatibility. Um, there are uh, XLS files, the Word files are dot .docs. It's all modern-ish. 
What is the function for adding A and B? Uh, uh, it's and then cell number. I think you can, I think you could just drop off add and just put a plus in between those two and it should be fine. Maybe it doesn't like the colon. Oh, it is doing it though. Yeah, oh. Okay. <laughs> doot doot. So it is properly selecting. It goes plus. No, I think you put a plus between A1 and B1. Oh. <laughs> no, you. Yeah, there you go. No, no just drop add off of that. No, the word add. <gasps> Oh, is that how you, No, I thought it was equal... Okay. Yeah, that's it. I think that's all you need. Oh, okay. So that's simpler than how they do it now. Well, that also works on newer ones as well. Oh, does it? Yeah. You don't have to use their fancy formulas if you don't want to. Yeah. So it's still Excel. It still has, this by default, opens four sheets, not three, like modern ones do. But that's still perfectly there to make charts... Um, you, so if you, if all you need to do was Excel and Word and stuff, you could still totally use it today. It, I mean, I know people who do just because they want to be like hip, like hipster edgy. But it's like, not that it's hipster. It's or, there's something to be said about security in the internet age for devices that don't connect to the internet. Right. And that's kind of the thing. Like, older machine... It's one of those things that's security through, opale through obsolescence. Mm -hmm. Where the older it is, the more secure it is because nobody can talk to it anymore. Right. Like, if somebody gets a hold of this desktop, they can't copy files off of it unless the person remembered their floppy. <laughs> yeah, and if someone did see it, they probably would just skip it and steal your flat screen TV instead. Right. So, yeah, like I said, there's something to be said about that. Um, is erase disk really that there? Yeah. Like, if you just click that, all of a sudden your operating system goes away? No. Oh, so it's... Um, erase disk is for usually for floppies. It will also ask... If the operating <laughs> system is installed on the hard drive, it will tell you that it can't. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, uh, word scan, is that like a flatbed scanner type? Yep. So, this supports um, serial printers and flatbed scanners. Um, so, Apple at the time had... Oh, a virtual keyboard. Neat. Yeah. Um, so, at the time, Apple had their whole uh, series of printers. I forget what they're called, but they had them. This supports all of them. Mm. Um, they had their own special interface, <coughs> because again, Mac loves their special interfaces. Um, so the Apple printer port goes off of the same port that I would use for the Ethernet adapter. Okay. You just have to get a dongle to go to a dongle to, yeah, it's a nightmare. It also supports, uh, parallel printers, mm -hmm. so it does have the big parallel port. Um, so it can... Add printers in all kinds of different ways. Um, it has generic drivers for hundreds of different models of printers built into it, which is really neat. Um, of course, you can always install a printer with a disk, floppy preferably. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, install your own printer drivers. So that's kind of where we're at with this. I, I have upgrade path for it. Um, the compact flash thing is what I would like to do at one point. Uh, that way you can have a series of compact flashes with various versions of Mac OS on them so that you can try them out right. on actual hard hardware, which has a lot of, you know, there's something to be said about that. Um, but here's some other neat things. So open back up the hard drive. 
Oh, over here. Oop, picked on something. What did you do? What? what did you do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's a quick question for you. Why? Oh, hit no. It couldn't find the scanner. Okay. Um, here's a good question for you. Why did uh, older versions of operating systems get very upset at you for not shutting down from the menu? Memory capacity? Nope. Uh, multitasking issues? Nope. Uh... Why does DOS let you just hold the button to shut it down? Or Apple's old operating system. Uh, oh, there's a bit more configuration data that needs to be written. Yeah, it's just to save settings. That's what? it. You got Win Commander. Uh, it needs a disk before it launches, unfortunately. Oh. I don't have the CD for Win Commander, unfortunately. The reason why I bring um, it up is because I support Star Citizen. So the guy, Chris Roberts, who uh, does that project, was the, I guess, the lead or something on Win Commander. So. Open up games. Oh. So not everything that installs on here uh, goes into the Apple menu in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think under miscellaneous, you'll see like the worst folder I've ever seen. What? No, it's not that one. Uh, new stuff, I think, maybe? Oh, no, try board. That's the one I think I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Nothing aligns to a grid! <laughs> Ooh, it's just. It yeah. Is. So. Monopoly, super fun. Minesweep, which I believe is a port of the. Oh, there's two versions of Monopoly on here. Neat. Um, new game or old game? Was someone in the middle of a old one? Oh, say like load. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. No, never, ever enable that. It makes the game last centuries. Yeah, I mean, this option, uh, modify I would say add. no. Okay. No, I saw you wasn't, I was slow at the reading it. Yes. <laughs> There's all these questions, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just want to uh, just see what it's like. Yeah, so if you saw the copyright on that, it was 87. This version of Monopoly is almost as old as I am. Commands. Roll dice. Wow. It's so old. <laughs> what happens if we purchase? And then you would roll. <laughs> on your first turn you just automatically get yeah know, anyway so that's fun <laughs> someone was like they wanted you to uh, um, use the keyboard instead of well 87 means it was built for an older version of Mac that probably didn't have the the mouse the mouse support um, you have to remember why solitaire was invented and I only know this because I went to the Strong Museum of Play. So the whole, <coughs> the whole reason uh, Windows launch or came with Solitaire is it was to teach people how to use a mouse. Oh. Because you have to drag the cards around. So that was its original purpose was mouse teaching software. Now was Solitaire did that come? Because it Solitaire is basically a meme at this point. Right. Uh, did was Solitaire was that a game before it was on yeah. Windows or? So Solitaire is a, a card game has existed well before computers, okay. but 
it's one of those games that a lot of people knew how to play just because everybody knew how to play solitaire at one point. Um, in fact, there's older episodes of like the Brady Bunch where you'll watch Alice play solitaire on the, the kitchen table. It's just one of those games that everybody knew how to play, so translating it to the computer and using people's mouths to teach them how to play a game they already knew right. was a very effective teaching tool. Does this have solitaire? Uh, yes, several versions, actually. Yeah, it doesn't have the window solitaire, but there are a couple of versions of solitaire on here. Ooh, checkers. This has got to be like one that white moves first, right? I don't remember. I think you have to start a new game first. Now you can move them. Is it, wait, this is chess or checkers? It's checkers. Oh. Self play. There we go. That's gonna get her. <laughs> and people just watch this? Was this cutting edge tech at the time? It's always good to have a demo for your software so people can see how it looks. I think it's getting itself in a logical loop. I feel like I'm not getting the, not getting the whole commands. That's fine. Anyway, uh, <laughs> neat. Yeah. So this has kind of been my project. Uh, I've got the ethernet adapter with me. Um, <laughs> Two modems, not very helpful. Um, but yeah, so I've been messing with it, and I've also been getting a lot of people going, oh, does it run this, do you have this one game for this old machine? Mm -hmm. So I have several game requests that people are like, you should play this game. Uh, thankfully, a lot of older games for this are on the Abandonware. Right. Um, there's a website I came across, and I think I remember the name is Old Mac software or something like that mm -hmm. um there's also some cool websites that are still supporting older macs like this you know because uh apple controls the hardware and the software on the same machine right. so there's a lot of neat things this can do that um windows machines at the time couldn't there's also a lot of things that it does that are very lazy um as far as like loading so one of the issues, so the older Macs that ran Unix early on, mm -hmm. the whole reason they had to reload the operating system and then they had to load a disk to load the Unix version of it, um, half the operating system is on the motherboard mm -hmm. and the other half is installed on the hard drive. I don't think that's the case with this one because you can swap hard drives out. I don't remember how much of that is on the motherboard itself. But... I'm going to mess around with it and see. I'm very excited. So for a part two, we'll have to come back when we're getting it on the internet. Yes. Part two is this on the internet. So I want to say thank you to my friend Steve, who uh, brought this beauty over to us to take a look at. And uh, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.